at precisely 9.58 local time on May 2nd, 2025, a powerful 7.4 magnitude earthquake struck the Drake Passage, causing alarm across coastal communities in southern Chile. Within minutes, sirens echoed in Puerto Williams and Punta Arenas, prompting thousands to evacuate to higher ground as the government activated its highest level of disaster response. Authorities describe this massive evacuation as a race against nature's clock, with police assisting those in need, such as wheelchair users. Join us as we explore how Chile's emergency response system faced a critical test in a region where tectonic forces have profoundly affected lives and communities. The Earthquake Strikes, First Minutes of Crisis At 9.58 local time, 12.58 GMT, on Friday, May 2, 2025, residents across Chile's Magallanes region and neighboring Argentina's Tierra del Fuego felt the earth shift beneath them. The United States Geological Survey quickly identified the source, a powerful 7.4 magnitude earthquake occurring at a shallow depth of just 10 kilometers 6 miles in the Drake Passage between Cape Horn and Antarctica. The quake's epicenter lay approximately 219 kilometers 136 miles south of Ushuaia, Argentina, often described as the world's southernmost city but its effects would soon ripple outward to coastal communities throughout the region. Within 15 minutes, three significant aftershocks measuring 5.4, 5.7, and 5.6 magnitude struck the same area, followed by another 5.4 magnitude tremor about an hour after the initial earthquake. Despite its remote location, the earthquake's shallow depth amplified its potential danger. Shallow earthquakes typically cause more surface shaking than deeper ones of similar magnitude. The U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration quickly issued alerts warning that Chile could face tsunami waves up to 9 feet (2.7 meters) tall, while Antarctic coastlines might experience waves reaching 3 feet (0.9 meters). Chilean President Gabriel Boric, himself a native of the Magallanes region, took to social media platform X, formerly Twitter, within hours of the quake, writing, We call for evacuation of the coastline throughout the Magallanes region. Right now, our duty is to prevent and heed the authorities. All state resources are available. The Chilean government immediately activated its National Disaster Prevention and Response System, Senapred, issuing a red alert, the highest level of emergency, which authorized the mobilization of all necessary resources to respond to the unfolding crisis. The Interior Ministry reported that both Interior Minister Alvaro Elizalde and his Undersecretary, Victor Ramos, headed directly to Senapred headquarters to coordinate the emergency response. Chile's Hydrographic and Oceanographic Service, SHOA, calculated that potential tsunami waves could reach Antarctic bases and cities in Chile's extreme south within hours. According to their estimates, the first waves might reach Puerto Williams, a town of approximately 2,800 residents, by 1455 local time, creating an urgent timeline for evacuation efforts. Mass Evacuation – Communities Respond to the Alarm as tsunami sirens echoed across coastal settlements, a remarkable evacuation effort rapidly took shape. In Chile's sparsely populated Magallanes region, authorities directed thousands of residents toward designated safe zones at higher elevations. According to Senapred, more than 1,700 Chileans moved to higher ground, including approximately 1,000 from Puerto Williams and 500 from Puerto Natales. Video footage from Puerto Williams captured residents walking purposefully uphill as emergency sirens wailed in the background. In one particularly moving scene shared by Chile's police force, an officer was recorded pushing a person in a wheelchair up a steep incline a poignant reminder of the human challenges during evacuations. Residents carried backpacks and essential items as they moved through evacuation routes that had been rehearsed in previous drills. In the larger city of Punta Arena, located along the Strait of Magellan, streets quickly filled with residents seeking shelter. Local television broadcast images of people carrying bags and personal belongings, though witnesses noted the evacuation proceeded calmly without signs of panic. 
We received the alert and we had to evacuate at work, but people are calm and well prepared, local resident Roberto Ramirez told a 24-hour news channel. The evacuation extended beyond mainland communities to Chile's scientific outposts in Antarctica, where 32 researchers and support staff followed emergency procedures, temporarily abandoning sensitive equipment and research projects to reach designated safe zones. The logistics of evacuating personnel from such remote locations presented unique challenges for emergency coordinators. Across the border in Argentina, officials reported that approximately 2,000 people had been evacuated from coastal areas in Tierra del Fuego province. The earthquake was felt most strongly in Ushuaia, with other towns affected to a lesser extent. Argentine authorities suspended all water activities and navigation in the Beagle Channel for at least three hours as a precautionary measure. Throughout the evacuation process, Senapred urged residents to act calmly and follow the instructions of the authorities and response teams. In a thoughtful touch that revealed the comprehensive nature of Chilean emergency planning, the agency reminded evacuees, don't forget to consider your pet and its needs. This small detail highlighted how modern disaster response increasingly acknowledges the importance of animal companions to family units during emergency. By mid-afternoon, the Magallanes region, Chile's largest geographically but home to only about 166,000 people, according to 2017 government figures, had experienced one of its most significant civil defense mobilizations in recent years. The evacuation demonstrated both the logistical challenges of protecting sparse populations spread across vast distances and the effectiveness of Chile's well-rehearsed emergency protocols. Tsunami Alert Science Behind the Warning The tsunami warning system that triggered Chile's massive evacuation represents decades of scientific advancement and international cooperation. When the 7.4 magnitude earthquake struck, a sophisticated network of seismic monitoring stations detected the event within seconds, automatically calculating its location, depth, and magnitude. This information was immediately transmitted to tsunami warning centers, including the U.S. Tsunami Warning Centers, which maintain 24-7 operations monitoring seismic activity across the globe. These centers use complex mathematical models that combine earthquake data with detailed ocean floor topography to predict how tsunami waves might form and propagate across the ocean. For the May 2nd event, models indicated a significant tsunami risk for areas within 300 kilometers, 186 miles, of the earthquake's epicenter. This placed Chilean coastal communities in the Magallanes region directly in the potential path of destructive waves while keeping the Falkland Islands outside the primary danger zone. The U.S. Tsunami Warning Centers noted in their alert that the first waves could reach Puerto Williams by approximately 1855 UTC, 1455 local time, but cautioned that actual arrival times may differ and the initial wave may not be the largest. This important detail highlighted a critical aspect of tsunami behavior. They typically arrive not as single waves, but as a series of surges that can continue for hours, with later waves sometimes proving more destructive than the first. A tsunami is a series of waves, and the time between waves can be five minutes to one hour, the warning stated. The hazards may persist for many hours or longer after the initial wave. Chile's Hydrographic and Oceanographic Service, CHOA, conducted its own independent analysis, confirming the tsunami threat and providing local authorities with critical time estimates. Their calculations suggested waves could reach Antarctic bases within an hour of the earthquake, while more remote locations might see impacts up to 12 hours later. The warning system worked as designed, providing crucial advanced notice that allowed thousands of people to evacuate well before any potential tsunami arrival. This represents a significant advancement from historical tsunami events, where coastal populations often had little or no warning before devastating waves struck. Later in the day, after several hours of monitoring coastal water levels and observing no significant tsunami activity, Chilean authorities withdrew the warning, determining that no destructive tsunami had materialized from the earthquake. This cautious approach, maintaining evacuations until definitively confirming no threat exists, is considered best practice in tsunami emergency management.
The decision to issue such a large-scale evacuation for an earthquake that ultimately did not produce a destructive tsunami wasn't an error, but rather a demonstration of Chile's commitment to precautionary principles in disaster management. Given the potential consequences of underestimating a tsunami threat, particularly in a country with Chile's seismic history, authorities consistently err on the side of caution. Chile's Seismic Legacy – Living on the Ring of Fire the May 2nd earthquake and tsunami alert didn't occur in isolation, but rather represents another chapter in Chile's long history of seismic activity. The country sits along the boundary of the Nazca and South American tectonic plates, making it one of the most earthquake-prone nations on Earth. This geological reality has profoundly shaped Chilean culture, architecture, infrastructure, and emergency preparedness systems. Chile's modern approach to earthquake and tsunami management was forged through devastating historical experiences. In 1960, the country was struck by a cataclysmic 9.5 magnitude earthquake, the most powerful ever recorded in human history. This catastrophic event killed between 1,000 and 6,000 people through the combined effects of the earthquake and resulting tsunamis. The disaster's impact extended far beyond Chile's borders as tsunami waves raced across the Pacific Ocean, affecting countries as distant as Japan, the Philippines, and Australia. In Hawaii, waves reached heights of 35 feet, 10.7 meters. In Hilo, more than 6,200 miles from the earthquake's epicenter. More recently, in 2010, an 8.8 .8 magnitude earthquake and subsequent tsunamis devastated coastal towns in south-central Chile. The intense shaking lasted approximately three minutes and was felt as far away as Peru, some 1,500 miles distant. Tsunamis following this earthquake caused widespread destruction in coastal communities, with about 9% of residents in affected areas losing their homes. At least 525 people died, and more than two dozen were reported missing in this disaster. These historical events have driven Chile to develop one of the world's most advanced earthquake and tsunami monitoring systems. The country maintains a network of over 100 seismic monitoring stations and nearly 40 sea-level monitoring stations that provide real-time data to emergency management centers. Chilean building codes are among the strictest globally regarding seismic safety, requiring structures to withstand significant ground motion without collapse. Now it's time to hear from you. Have you ever experienced an emergency evacuation, maybe during an earthquake? Speaking of which, what are your thoughts on the recent earthquakes in Chile and their evacuation effort? Do you ever find yourself living in fear of tsunamis? We'd love to hear your experiences and opinions in the comments below.